guys welcome to my channel i'm ayana for those of you who don't know welcome if you're new here and if you're returning thank you so much for coming back today's video is going to be a little bit different it's kind of personal it's about my life journey i had brain surgery um october of 2018 and today i'm going to be doing a brain surgery q and a just some things people have asked and to inform you know those who may be going through the same thing that i'm going through i just want to let you know you're not the only one i had a rare brain tumor called acoustic neuroma it's not that many people out there who have it i think there's about 20,000 cases per year so it's pretty rare and unfortunately i was one of those unlucky people who have had it however i'm here i'm alive i'm thankful so yeah i just decided to do this video i should have been done it but actually sometimes i just don't feel like talking about it it's just draining I had surgery like i said in october of 18 i unfortunately have to have surgery again which is scheduled for next month april 2020 the tumor the stupid little tumor is unfortunately growing back i don't know why i don't know why they did leave a sliver to save my face however that was supposed to die out but you know with my age i'm to them i'm young so i guess anything is possible they didn't tell me that it wouldn't grow back, but they said it was a significant chance that it wouldn't. You know, doctors are never going to give you a definite because they're not guys. They don't know what's going to happen. They can only inform you of, you know, the better statistics of what they have done and the people they have, you know, seen for this type of thing. So, yeah, that's what it is. So, I got my little paper down here just of questions that um, people have asked me. And then I'm going to just go through the questions and give you the answers to the best of my ability. Just from my experience and my knowledge. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. So, my first question I have is what symptoms did you have? Like, how did you know something was wrong? My first symptom was hearing loss. I gradually gradually started losing my hearing in 2012 like i just thought maybe i had an ear infection i didn't know what was wrong I, the last thing on my mind was a brain tumor anything wrong with, with my brain at all so yeah it was just hearing loss and then i also later as the years go on got went on i would say about 2015 i had tingling on like the left side of my face and my left arm would sometimes get like right here it would get like like this weak feeling or um tingling feeling i guess like the same thing i i didn't know i thought it would be from laying on my arm even though i wasn't laying on it when i would get that feeling i really had no idea what it was and i wasn't familiar with this an acoustic neuroma it's um so yeah i i didn't think anything of it i just thought i was a healthy young girl and you know my body is just going through some things well yeah it was really going through some things so i'm another side effects is side effect is fatigue i am always tired i've always been tired though i'm anemic so i thought that was was you know a result of me being anemic but um a side effect of having an acoustic neuroma is major fatigue i am always tired even more now since the surgeries since before like i am just always feeling drained it's really hard for me to you know um just have energy sometimes i just want to do nothing but sleep or just sit in silence you know because since having the surgery life is different very different so yeah those were the side effects um how did you find out is the next question um i found out found out by the third doctor i saw um i saw two doctors before him two or three doctors before him i actually believe but you know i guess they thought because i looked healthy nothing was wrong one doctor told me i had i got in a car accident in 2012 and i have a scar here i don't know if you see it i cover it with my hair sometimes and he said oh it's probably just you know the hearing losses because that's what i always went in for i would say i can't hear out of this ear well um the hearing loss is from could be from you know the at car accident so i'm thinking okay well it very well could be so i didn't think nothing of it until the hearing started getting worse like okay well if it is from the car accident then is there something that needs to be done do i need some sort of surgery or whatever you know so i went to see a second doctor the second doctor was an audiologist i did not like her at all she pretty much told me that i was lying about not being able to hear she didn't say that but they give you these audiology tests and i guess like the test it didn't show significant decrease in my hearing i can't hear i am i was 30 years old you know like what the hell would i want to be coming in your office for about hearing lady i can't hear i think the hearing was off because i could when you're 
losing hearing in one ear you can hear sounds reflecting off of my right ear into my left ear so i think that's what i was hearing and i don't know she her demeanor just wasn't she wasn't really nice i don't know what her problem was but maybe she was just having a bad day i don't know but to tell me like she made me feel crazy basically so after leaving her office i let it go for another two years because i'm like well maybe i am crazy you know this lady has a degree in whatever she is talking about and if she says that my hearing is no it's not the same in each ear but it's not enough to what she said is not enough for anything to be worried about what do you mean lady if i'm losing hearing in one ear i'm I'm young, you know, at the time, like, I think it's, it should be something that I should be worried about. I'm not 90 years old. Why am I losing hearing? But, you know, she kind of just really pissed me off. She pissed me off so bad. So I put it off for a couple years. I went and saw this third doctor, really nice doctor. I'm so happy to have found him. Um, actually before him, yeah, I went to a hearing clinic. They had a free hearing clinic. I'm like, okay, these people specialize in this. I went down to the hearing clinic and one of the doctors told me, um, you know, your symptoms sound like something called acoustic neuroma. And of course, I'm like, what is an acoustic neuroma? And she says a tumor. Immediately, I started to panic. And she's like, you know, it's a rare tumor. However, th that doesn't mean you have it. I doubt if you have it. But you, you might want to get that checked out, you know. And she's like, and if you do have it, you know, they just have a simple, sur well, not, she didn't say simple, but a surgery to have it removed. And, you know, hopefully you'll get, you'll get back to normal. She didn't know. They didn't run like an M MRI or anything, but she was really nice and she informed me, unlike the previous doctors, that I could have this tumor. Like my my symptoms were significant towards having this tumor. So because of her, I made an appointment a week later with a specialist and this doctor was so nice. He, as soon as I came in, he said, we're going to run a test on you. We're going to do an MRI, which they did. MRI takes about 45 minutes. A brain MRI with with and without contrast you sit in this machine and they um run these loud machines over your head and they scan lo and behold I get a call the very next day you know I knew something was wrong because I was at work when they called and they called a few times I guess he, he didn't want to leave it on my voicemail and unfortunately he told me yeah I had a tumor and that I needed to come in so that can set me up with a specialist and that's exactly what they did so I'm really thankful for that doctor that he actually cared enough to you know care about my symptoms to try to find out what was wrong with me otherwise I probably wouldn't be here right now I don't know so yeah I'm, that's how I found out the third question someone asked um someone said i've been having headaches do you think i have what you have no i don't think you have what i have uh, at least i hope not i mean it's pretty rare Twenty thousand cases a year um and that doesn't mean here you know i'm in ohio Twenty thousand cases i i don't think that's something that you would have i really don't think that there's many people here i'm not gonna say there isn't i just don't think it's what i have however you need to get checked out if you're having constant headaches. I don't think that's normal. I'm not a doctor. This is just my opinion. If you're constantly having headaches, I don't think that's normal. And if your doctor is telling you it's normal and you don't trust it, see another doctor. Don't wait years like I did. Don't wait weeks. Just see another doctor. Most insurance companies pay for a second opinion. Some doctors just simply do not care and then you have the very very good doctors that do and i am lucky enough to have good doctors on my side at this point that really care about my about my life my you know like overall they care about everything find a different doctor if your doctor is telling you it's normal because i just don't think having headaches is normal i don't have headaches and i've had brain surgery you know so no i don't think i have a headache probably every six months so if you have them all the time I think you should go see a doctor and find out what's going on with you. But no, I don't think you have what I have. Um, the next question is, were you scared? Most definitely. A brain tumor? Yeah, I was scared. I was scared to death. I never imagined in a million years that I would even be going through anything like this. And it, when you think of a brain tumor, you, you know, I thought of just death. I thought that was it for me. Like, wow, my life is over. But thank God. <laughs> I am here I am very very happy to be here and this whole ordeal really really changed my life life is different it changed my life 
and it also gave me a different outlook on life anything can happen to anybody at any time i never expected this and i'm sure anybody else that it has happened to never expected it that it just hits you like bam and there it is your life is about to change and a lot of people think because oh you look fine after surgery you know that you're not sick or anything honey listen my life is different very very different but it's the new normal for me so it, it, it just is what it is um so the next question is how do you stay so positive honestly I'm not always positive I'm really a negative Nancy when it comes to a lot of things especially myself when it comes to me I I have an issue with just I've just had so much bad stuff happen to me and I don't even want to talk about it because I'll start crying but I have had so much bad stuff happen to me that it's just kind of hard to be positive still. but I this has helped me <clears throat> excuse me this has helped me grow as a person this has helped me appreciate life more this has helped me I want to do a lot more than I'm doing now however like I told you previously I'm always tired I just don't feel like it this has make me made me want to live my life so 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 much more um, so I just give myself positive talks, positivity, and it also helps your recovery and it helps you from stressing out. I mean, it's, it's better said than done not to stress out when something's wrong with you. Easier said than done. I mean, when it's something wrong with you, but listen, just think of the positive, out, positive outcomes and try to think more positive. Stay around positive people, stay around positive energy. And if you don't want to be bothered, you don't have to be bothered. That's just it. So yeah, that's it for that. Um, and also I would say some people don't get the luxury of living after brain surgery. You're having your head split open. I mean, it just is what it is. Some people don't get to live. And unfortunately, uh, that's a very, very sad thing. Once this happened to me, I researched so much stuff. So many people have passed on after having brain surgery. Not necessarily the type of tumor that I have, but just brain surgery in general. So I actually, not that I feel lucky because I still have it, but I feel lucky enough, felt lucky anyway, because I have to go through this, through this again, felt lucky enough that you know I'm able to still be here some people lost their family because of this and their friends like it's awful so yeah that keeps me positive a lot I'm thankful to be here honey that keeps me very very as much as positive as I can be in a situation like this I'll put it like that I, I try to stay upbeat I'm just a, a naturally upbeat person anyway unless it comes to you know hardships in my life but other than that I think just positivity speak positivity in your life manifest good energy and you know things will work out hopefully things will work out in the bet for the better for you the next question was is what you have cancerous no thankfully what I have is not cancerous um, it's a benign tumor author it grew back it's benign and it's not cancerous thankfully so no it's a benign tumor it's not cancerous um what is the name of what you have or had have because I have to have surgery again so the name of the tumor that I have is called acoustic neuroma um also it, could, it used to be known I guess back in the uh, earlier years as a vestibular schwannoma so you might hear it called either so most people call it now acoustic neuroma but I still still read some things that say vestibular schwannoma so yeah I think they use vestibular schwannoma like in England and stuff like that like I'm in groups up for them on Facebook and I believe I see that mostly from people from like the UK or just other countries beside America I think that might be a name like that came from over there and I really don't know how they came with acoustic neuroma but yeah that's what it is why do you have to have another another surgery sadly like I said previously the tumor is growing back um I don't want to I do not want to I really wish I didn't have to but you know the bigger the tumor the more risk of your life so I have to have another surgery a sliver of about 20% of the tumor was left to preserve my facial nerve um, one of the biggest side effects of the surgery if not if you know the tumor is so big is facial paralysis on that side I, I don't want that I don't think anybody wants that but I've seen cases where you know some people have unfortunately suffered from that and that's just not something that I wanted so me and the doctor had a discussion which I'm pretty sure they do with all their patients of trying to preserve the facial nerve um I never in a million years imagined that I would be going through this as I'm sure anyone who has experienced this 
would have thought like who just wakes up and think oh i'm gonna have a brain tumor when i'm 20 you know or 50 or 70 like nobody thinks that but they do exist so that's why i have to have another surgery i don't regret regret leaving the sliver on my face because i've seen people like i said i'm in groups they have said that they got the whole tumor removed and it still grew back i think it just depends on the person's body just depends on a person's you know their their blood supply i guess because that's what keeps the tumor going as my understanding is your blood su supply pumping you know providing the tumor with whatever it needs to grow so yeah i don't think it really matters some people the tumor grows back some people it doesn't it just depends on your luck i guess and i have horrible luck obviously so yeah i'm one of those that have to have it again how long how long was your surgery my surgery was 12 and a half hours it was really long i couldn't even uh, imagine what my mom and my family and friends and you know my boyfriend everything was going through at the time 12 hours of just wondering i'm not having you know fingernail surgery not to say that that's not important because any part of your body being sliced open is very important and it's it could be deathly it could be fatal um but to have brain surgery yeah my mom i know she, my mom i get my panicky panicness panickiness <laughs> I get my what I don't know anxiety from her I guess so I know she was out there having it I was asleep you know they knock you out on the way back to the to the room I really remember them talking to the nurses and then the, them saying count backwards from 10 I don't even know if I got till 6 I think of 10 9 8 I was out of it and when I woke up I still felt you know you're full of anesthesia you still feel I'm not one to take meds, but I'm sure anesthesia makes anyone feel groggy. I just still felt so sleepy for about 24 hours after that. Like you could, I could tell when the probably 48 hours actually, I could tell when the um, anesthesia left my body. Like it's like a, a crippling feeling. Like you can't do much. So yeah, my surgery was 12 and a half hours at um, University of Michigan. Okay, the next question is, how was your recovery? Hell, I'm gonna be honest with you, recovery was hell. This is your brain, this is one of the major organs in your body, This your brain controls everything. There is no life without a brain, so recovery was hell. Your body is trying to get used to everything all over again. It's trying to readjust to the new normal that you'll be living after having surgery and the first month or a few weeks or so it's just i don't know how to explain it's just hell it's hell but you'll get better you'll you'll pull through um the new you you know smells lighting prickling noises scratches somebody rolling a cart down the hall all of that literally gives you chills and make it made me feel like I had to throw up especially smells like when you leave the hospital when you're in the hospital and you have visitors make sure you tell your visitors don't wear cologne don't wear perfume don't wear anything with scents all of that stuff is going to make you very very nauseous it made me nauseous I don't know about you but to help you with that I would say get alcohol pads sniff, sniff alcohol pads um I heard that that works for some people I don't know because I didn't have to use that I just had told everyone you know please just don't come in here with smells like my body can't take it it literally makes you feel lethargic like it's it's, it's not a good feeling the first few days all you will want to do is sleep I had no appetite uh, I was pretty much forced to eat I ate a few grapes and then hospital food is just not good anyway but I had no appetite I ate very very minimal I felt like crap all I wanted to do was sleep and they constantly pump you up with meds those first few days because you know you're in a lot of pain you just had your head split wide open um as the weeks went on i luckily began to feel like i can do this i can do this yana you can do this you don't want to be all down and out like this forever get up and get yourself together and that's what i did um i adjusted to my new normal the best way i knew how and with the help of my friends my family and friends you know things just started to progress more and more so yeah but the first few days it's hell is brain surgery so i'm pretty sure you expect that um side effects what are my side effects life is different life is so different 
I want my old life back. I really do. Life is so different for me. I'm thankful to be here, but I want my life back. So my first side effect is I'm deaf in my left ear. I can't hear a thing. You know, before the surgery, I couldn't hear much because my hearing was pretty much gone anyway because I waited so long. If I probably would have, you know, taken care of this earlier when I saw those doctors who clearly had no care for me or just didn't know what the hell they were talking about. I might have been able to save my hearing but over the years the tumor grew and grew and grew and it damaged my hearing nerve so my hearing was very minimal before the surgery and now it's just gone I'm deaf in my ear I can't hear anything and you know with being deaf I'm thankful to still have my hearing in my right ear but I can't talk on the phone listen to music at the same time I can't watch TV I can't I can't ear hustle because I can't hear you have to speak directly to me or it has to be like really really quiet on the out outside areas for me to hear what's going on like if winds blowing and someone's talking from another room like what are you saying I have no idea what you're talking about so yeah that is completely um and I'm constantly saying huh huh every time somebody says something to me yes what a lot of times I just answer questions like mm -hmm, and smile because I have no idea what the hell someone is saying and it, I don't feel like saying, oh, I'm deaf in this ear constantly, constantly because it pisses me off, honestly, when I'm constantly having to say I'm deaf. Who, who, who wants to keep repeating that? Like, nobody. That's part of the reason. I, I don't do a lot of things that I used to do. I stay in the house a lot more than I used to because I just don't want to explain that. Like, I don't want to keep saying, over here, talk to me over here. You know, like, I'm just going to stay home. A lot of times, which I do. Sometimes I get out the house, but it's definitely, definitely not as much as I used to. Reading lips helps. Um, I found myself to be a re lip reader now. Someone's talking to me, I'm looking in their mouth like this. Because I'm trying to see what they say. Because, see what they're saying. Because hearing is just not the same. Yes, I can hear, but it's not like it used to be. I can hear out of this ear and this ear only. Don't talk in my left ear. Some people I've gotten, I've seen, I had it. They got tattoos over here or whatever side. They had the tumor on that says, you know, off switch. But who's going to be looking at that when they're trying to talk to you? Not to say that anything's wrong with it because I think it's a good idea. But if they're not looking at that, you know, I still have to say I'm deaf in this ear. Talk to me over here. And then if it's someone that don't, don't know you had surgery, you know, they may be like, what happened? You didn't used to be. And I, I don't want to be out and about explaining that all the time, you know. So I just stay home a lot more than I used to um it just just takes a lot to clarify to get clarification on what someone is saying and it's nerve-wracking because that's not what my life was two years ago you know I'm still adjusting to this it's a completely different life being only able to hear in one ear imagine you know you guys probably talk on the phone listen to music I can't do both because I can't hear like that's just it that's different um Another side effect, I walk like I'm drunk most of the time. The tumor is situated be by your facial nerve and your vestibular nerve, which your vestibular nerve is your balance nerve. Um, and yeah, I pretty much walk like I'm drunk. They had to, they had to, um, did they cut my, no, they had to, they cut my hearing nerve, I believe, yeah. They cut my hearing nerve, but my vestibular nerve, vestibular nerve was damaged during the surgery so my balance is just not what it used to be and I don't know if it ever will ever will be um so if you see me tripping over or you see someone who has had it you know tripping or just walking sideways they're not doing it on purpose and they're not drunk it's just something that we can't control it's just it's really difficult I used to be the girl that wore heels all the time I was never a tennis shoe girl I was never a flats kind of girl now I'm in tennis shoes a lot, don't wear heels as much, and if I do, you know, I'm standing a certain way, or it's just different. Life is different when you can't walk like you used to. You have, after my surgery, I had to, you know, have assistance with walking down the halls and just walking, period. I couldn't even take a shower by myself at first, right after recovery, because my balance, I was tipping over all over the place. However, it did get better, so stay positive about that. Do your therapy. You're going to be um, prescribed therapy after your surgery. Do it. You need to do it as much as as much as often, as much as you can, because it really helps. Do your therapy. It's, it's, I'm not back to normal, but I can walk, and I'm thankful for that. Um, my another side effect effect is my face is numb over here, from here to here, my face is numb. 
it was from here to here so it's getting better but here we go i'm about to have surgery again so hopefully i don't have any new side effects i'm hoping and praying please god that i don't have any new side effects i'm hoping that you know i don't have to go through anything any of that hard crap anymore um so from like yeah from like i said from here to here it's actually starting to feel less numb but i notice like when i get stressed out about things it tightens up over here so i don't know like those nerves i really don't know what's going on because i'm not a doctor but these nerves when i get stressed out it gets really tight or it starts tightening up like it's okay right now but i can feel it it's numb right here and because of that when i eat there's always food on my lip or something now, you know? So that keeps me in the house too because I don't want to be out eating all the time. And then people are like, you got something right here. You got something right here. Which they're telling me just to help me. But it pisses me off because I can't feel it. Like, why can't I feel this? Why did I have to go through this to not be able to feel this feeling on my face? Like, what the hell is going on in my life, right? What's going on in my life is I had a brain tumor and I just have not, I guess, came to terms with that yet. Because I still get mad at little stuff like that. Like having ranch on my mouth because i can't feel it so that part of my face is still numb but i have seen progress like i said it was from here to here now it's here to here so i'm thankful for that also i just want it to go away i want my my mouth back i want my normal feeling back i want to be able to eat and actually feel the food left on my mouth um another side effect bright lights bright lights bother the hell out of my eyes um especially right after surgery i was walking around here like elvis right after surgery i had sunglasses on in the house in the hospital kept the house so dark which i still still keep the house dark you know like i just don't like bright lights i don't like lights on it, it really strains my eyes and it hurts uh, it could be a combination of me getting older but it's most definitely from the surgery. Like my cell phone lighting is turned all the way down. If you want me to look at your phone, I tell turn your phone down. Don't even put that phone in my face because it hurts my eyes so bad. So yeah, bright lights. It feels like you know that galaxy lighting when, um, when someone puts bright light bright lights in my face. Like cars coming towards you when people have on their brights is the worst. I, I have to like stop in my tracks because I can't see. So yeah, that that's really bad. Um another side effect this is my last one that i have written down but there's so many there are so many life is just really different but what i have down here is my memory my memory sucks i really feel like i have i don't know my my memory sucks especially short-term memory i i would sit something down forget where i forgot forget where i said it um like now, I don't even know what I was about to say. <laughs> I would sit something down and forget where I said it, or somebody would say something to me, or I'll say I'll, di I'll do something and I'll, I'll forget. Like my memory is just shot. It's just not what it used to be. And it, it's like brain fog. Like I just draw a blank so much and I hate that because I hate not, I mean, I'm sure everyone does, but I really hate that you can tell the difference now. Like I can tell the difference in myself. Like, wow, I would have remembered that. Of course, everybody forgets things because I used to forget things, but now it's kind of like, I have to write everything down, sticky notes and stuff, because I'll forget. My memory sucks. Oh, and my last is, I said this, that was my last one, but this is the one that I, um, this is not the last, but this is the last one I'm going to talk about right now. Um, speech. My speech is different. You might have noticed throughout this video that, um, it's not like a stutter, but I guess it's part, it could be like coinciding with the brain fog, like, um, I just don't know what I'm saying sometimes. Like, I'll be trying to say a word and another word to come out or i have to sit and think like um i don't know when it's kind of a hesitant speech before i say something like like initiating a stutter but it doesn't come out as a stutter it's more like a um i don't know i just can't grasp my thoughts and it don't come out they don't come out right sometimes so yeah my speech is different the way i talk and everything is different sorry y'all just fixing my hair <laughs> um Okay, and the last one I have is suggestions for people who are having upcoming surgery or even for those who have had it. Um, my first suggestion is, like I said before, try to think positive. I know it. I know it is easier said than done, especially coming from someone like me because I am a negative Nancy. But listen, speak positivity into your life. 
it helps your recovery it helps your process of going into the surgery listen it helps you go into surgery feeling like i can do this i'm gonna pull through and i'm gonna come out better than ever it helps you think positive um it really helps your spirits if you have a good support system use them use them as much as help as they offer use them you need it you're gonna need a support system and if you don't have a support system you know do the best that you can i really i really hope that everyone has somebody that can lean on because you're really going to need help after surgery with with so many things because your body is adjusting to a new normal and if you don't have you know support system i would suggest staying in the hospital longer than they tell you know because they tell you you can leave after a few days after three or four days um you can go home if you want stay stay until you're ready to feel like you can go home and do everything on your own don't go home trying to run a mar marathon because that won't happen even if you do go home but just stay where, where you can have help I, I mean your head was just cut open your body is adjusting to your balance your hearing you, you have to eat you have to shower you have to take care of your household period some of you may have children or pets you need help take use use your support system as much as possible um stay off of google <laughs> look who's talking that's all i did was google but stay off of google if you have questions about you know things that have happened you can message me on social media or join groups join acoustic neuroma groups that's what i did or just join a brain tumor group they have just brain tumors all type of tumors and they have specific groups for acoustic neuroma or vestibular schwannoma and there's tons of people in there in those groups that have had so many different scenarios that the questions you might have may be in those groups you just type whatever it is you're looking for up in the search bar of that group and the answer may be there so just don't google i would say stay go to the groups because some there are some people out here that don't have any issues you know some people are are out living their lives see what i mean my speech are out i can't even get it out some people are out living their lives they're not in those groups i stayed in the group because you know it's just interesting to see what life is like after that i didn't think the tumor would be growing back so that's not why i stayed in the group but they're very helpful it's very insightful have your family join the groups it you know it, it gives them an idea of things that's wrong with you and how they can be a bit of better help to you for your family and friends um so yeah i would say join groups and just stay off of google i actually was just kicked out of a group though for asking question uh, this question I just was kicked out of a group for asking you know I posted my YouTube link to ask people in the group you know what question do you have about the brain surgery or you know if you're on watch and wait or whatever the case may be because sometimes they ask questions and it's just really difficult to type a paragraph a four page letter of you know an explanation when I can just answer your question just like this on the video they kicked me out of out of the group I guess it's because of this because I didn't do anything else I've been in that group since I've got diagnosed in 2018 but yeah I didn't have an explanation or anything so I'm really upset about that I really want to dog those people because I specifically stated that my YouTube channel wasn't pertaining specifically to my surgery but this particular video was so if you have questions leave them down below and i'll answer them in the video how simple is that it's not like i was promoting anything i was just simply asking so that i could answer these questions on the video but hey i guess that's their group the administrators are assholes basically so yeah but there are other groups i'm in other groups so it's it's, it's fine um and other groups are a lot are pretty much the same they give a lot of information it's a lot of detailed information and a, and a lot everybody has different cases like no one's outcome is the same you might have the same visual outcome but stuff may be different your recovery may be different your treatment may be different you may not need surgery you may be on a watch and wait you might get ready um what is it radiology no Ugh, see i can't even think of what it's called um radiation you might get radiation everything is different research in those yeah. groups also another thing i would suggest research your doctor don't just go to a doctor because it was recommended to you research the doctor find out how many surgeries they have did find you don't out. feel comfortable with the doctor's bedside manner or the way they handle you find another doctor you don't have to go to this doctor because that's who you've seen this is your face and here we are talking about here this is not uh, I, I don't want to say any other body part because all surgeries are important like i said but this is 
a major organ in your body. Research your doctors. You have the right to ask questions. How many surgeries have you had? Are you, are your hands steady? You ask whatever you feel comfortable with. You don't disrespect the doctor by any means because he is responsible for your life. But just just research. Research your doctor. Find out you know how long they've been doing this. Any question you feel necessary to ask to make you feel more comfortable with laying your life on the table for someone operating on you for 12 hours or 8 or more hours or however long your surgery may be, ask questions. I already said this, but I'm going to say it again. Do your therapy. It's called vestibular therapy. After your surgery, I think they give you about two days before they start coming to bother you with surgery. Um, I mean, with therapy and stuff. Do it. Get up out of that bed and do it. It's very, very important. They, they do it for you. You can't leave the hospital for one until you can walk on your own or with minor assistance. You gotta walk down this hall, what well, I did. I had to walk down a hall and they take you down to the therapy room and you walk upstairs. Do your therapy, you need it. You're gonna have to do it. Um, it, it helps you a whole lot and they're not just doing it be, just to get on your nerves or anything like that. They're trying to help you. You might not feel like it, you're not gonna feel like it. You're gonna feel like shit, excuse my language. You're gonna feel like crap. Do the therapy. You're, wanna, you're gonna wanna go home because they're gonna, you're, they're gonna be coming in there every four hours I think sooner than that, every two hours to check your blood pressure, give you medicine and all that. Do your therapy if you want to go home. And even if you just want a better quality of life, do your therapy. Um, they're going to send you home with the therapy guideline. Do your therapy at home. My therapy was to be done three times a day. When I first got home, I didn't feel like it. I'm just being honest. I didn't do it as much as I should right away. My recovery probably would have went... My cover went well after so you know after the second third week I believe but it probably would have went better if I'd have been doing my therapy when I got home when I first got home I didn't want to do anything but sleep and sit in the dark with sunglasses on get up and do your therapy of course you're supposed to get rest but three times a day and it's, it doesn't take you longer than 30 minutes they have you do like you know turning and walking trying to get your balance back trying to get your eyesight back to being able to focus Instead of your head feeling like you're in a, in a spaceship, your head's going to be spinning. It's because your body is trying to adjust. And if you're not doing anything, your body, your body is not, your brain is not adjusting to anything. Do your therapy. It's really important. Um, I started seeing significant improvement and so did my family once I started doing a therapy. And you're going to need help with the therapy. So you need someone there with you. Um because you're going to be walking and turning step by step like they had you doing step in front of feet in front of feet and all that you know if your balance is off you might fall down you need somebody there to hold you up so if you have someone get help and if not like i said stay in that hospital have someone help you you need help don't try to do this on your own don't make it worse on yourself than it has to be you need help you might feel like oh i'm fine everything's okay then what do your therapy so yeah, with that being said, um, those are all the questions that I have right now. But if you have more, leave the com leave a comment down below and I'll do a part two of this video if you like. Or if you just have any questions that you know you would ask me, you can find me on social media. And um, my social media will be linked down below also if you have any further questions. I hope this video was helpful for you. I wish I had someone to... Which I did. I found some really, really good people. Nice people that helped me out through, you know, messages and things like that. But... It's just not always who I, they probably didn't feel out, feel like typing out six paragraphs to you know explain their hardships in their life. So I felt like this was easier for me. So I really hope this was helpful for you. Like I said, if you have any other questions, leave a comment down below and I'll answer to the best of my ability. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. My brain surgery Q&A. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.